Hello everyone, I am Dr. Lee Deng, an assistant professor and a medical oncologist at the University of Washington and the Fred Hodge Cancer Center. Today I'm going to review Keynote 671 and 19.2, two important clinical trials investigating perioperative immunotherapy in non-small cell lung cancer. In last month, those two clinical trials were published in New England Journal of Medicine. Although they both investigated the role of perioperative immunotherapy, they are different in many ways. So next, I'm going to talk about the main findings of the two clinical trials, how do we interpret them in the current treatment landscape, and what are the implications for practice. First, let's take a look at the design and the patient characteristics in those two trials. Kino 671 is a phase 3 trial, while NADIN2 is a phase 2 trial with a much smaller sample size. Kino 61 enrolled patients with stage 2 and stage 3 diseases, but NADIN2 only included patients with stage 3 diseases. One point to highlight is that both trials include patients with the upfront resectable disease. Those are not patients who had borderline resectable disease. In the new adjuvant phase, Kino 61 gave treatment for four cycles, while NADIN2 gave treatment for three cycles before surgery. In the adjuvant phase, Pembro was given for nine months, while Nivo was given for six months in the NADIN2. The primary endpoint was EFS and OS as a dual endpoint in Kino 671, while NADIN2's primary endpoint was PCR. In K-061, 70% of those patients had stage 3 disease, and N2 disease account for 42%. In NADIN2, it has to be noted that the multi-station N2 accounts for 39% of the patient population. In T-Note, 82% of patients were able to proceed to in-study surgery, while NADIN2 had 93%. Here are the results. We can clearly see that the Kaplan-Meier curves separate very well between the experimental arm and the placebo arm in both trials. The hazard ratio is 0.58 in Kino 1601 and 0.47 in NADIN2. Both are clinically meaningful and statistically significant. The, those two trials also reported the PCR rate which is 18% in Kino 671 and 37% in NADIN 2. So where does the perioperative approach stand in the current landscape of treatment? We now have perioperative approach, new adjuvant-only approach, and adjuvant-only approach. The latter two approaches have been approved by USFDA. The new adjuvant-only approach consists of new adjuvant chemo IO for three cycles, followed by surgery, which was tested in Checkmate A16. The adjuvant-only approach consists of surgery upfront, followed by adjuvant chemotherapy, and followed by adjuvant IO. Those, uh, this approach was tested in Empower 010 and Keynote 091. So what are the practice-relevant questions? First, should we use new adjuvant perioperative or adjuvant therapy? Two, should we give three or four cycles if new adjuvant approach is what we choose? And third, after new adjuvant treatment, should we give more ad adjuvant therapy? Let's take a look at the data more closely. One thing that I need to point out is that we currently do not have head-to-head -head comparison among those approaches by clinical trials. We should always interpret cross-trial comparison with caution. But if we look at the primary endpoint, it appears that the hazard ratio favors the preoperative approach somewhat. In another perspective, that we can see that consistently in patients who have received the new adjuvant or preoperative approach, not all of patients can receive in-study surgery. Nearly 20% of those patients cannot proceed to in-study surgery in those clinical trials. In comparison, by nature of adjuvant-only approach, 100% of the patients were able to receive surgery. But if we look at the Empower 010, the adjuvant clinical trial, more closely, we can find that 
only 84% of patients were able to receive immunotherapy after surgery, after chemotherapy, suggesting that there is a group of patients whose biology did dictate that regardless what purport, what treatment you choose, they are not able to complete the treatment that is intended for them. If we look at the melanoma data, there might be something that can be suggestive for non-small cell lung cancer. So 1801 randomized patients to perioperative versus adjuvant-only pembro in melanoma patients and show that the new adjuvant, adjuvant approach improved the event-free survival compared to adjuvant-only group. So currently, although we do not have definitive data to say that which approach is better for the patients, melanoma data appear to suggest that perioperative therapy might be better. However, we still need more lung small cell data in this setting. And the patients should always be informed about the risk of no surgery after new adjuvant treatment. How about the next question? Three or four cycles of new adjuvant treatment. Again, although we do not have head-to-head -head comparison, currently available data do not suggest that more new adjuvant treatment resulted higher PCR rate, suggesting that more cycles do not appear to be beneficial. And how about the last question, but not the least? Additional adjuvant therapy after new adjuvant treatment? If we look at those post hoc analysis from Checkmate A16 and the Kino 671, if you remember that Checkmate A16 didn't have a mandatory component of adjuvant immunotherapy, and in those patients who did not achieve PCR, it appears that immunotherapy group did not do much better in terms of event-free survival. However, in Keynote 61, who had received adjuvant immunotherapy after new adjuvant therapy, there appears to be a difference among those patients who do not achieve PCR, suggesting that there might be a group of patients may benefit from additional adjuvant therapy but we don't really have a definitive answer yet from a clinical trial. <clears throat> Here, I would like to show a data from gastric cancer that we look at this perioperative treatment in NCDB. And we found that after new adjuvant treatment, only those patients who had a sensitive disease, meaning that they had a downstage but no PCR by preoperative chemotherapy, were able to benefit from additional adjuvant treatment, suggesting that the adjuvant therapy might be guided by the response to new adjuvant treatment. In summary, perioperative immunotherapy is a new standard of care option for stage 2 to stage 3 resectable non-small cell lung cancer pending regulatory decisions. We currently do not know which approach is better for patients, perioperative, new adjuvant only or adjuvant only. Patients should be informed about risk of no surgery after new adjuvant treatment. Current data do not support that four cycles of new adjuvant treatment is superior to three cycles. It is, appears that some patients may benefit from adjuvant therapy after new adjuvant treatment, although we currently do not know which group and a new adjuvant response adapted adjuvant therapy warrants further research. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it.